Welcome to Hope Online. We are so glad that you're joining us today, wherever or whenever that may be. If you are new to Hope or haven't had a chance to connect with us yet, we would love for the opportunity to connect. You can text NEW TO HOPE to 97000. That's NEW TO HOPE to 97000. Today we're going to be back in our Peaks and Valley series, so grab your notebook, your Bible, and your pen, and let's learn together. Welcome to Hope Online, everybody. Uh, my name is Pastor John. I get a chance to uh, connect with you today. We wanna say welcome to church. We're so glad to be able to spend time with you. Um, welcome. We love getting to connect with new people, getting a chance to make new friends. And so if you are joining us online for the very first time or first few times, we just wanna say we're really glad you're here. We, we view this time as our very specific and um, uh, intentional time to study the Bible with you together. So uh, we hope okay, grab your Bible, get, get something to write down, uh, maybe a note or two with, and um, uh, welcome again. We, we we just we value this time so much. Um, we, we know that that uh, that's a great uh, um, uh, on ramp to 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 connecting to a church. And so if you're in the area and and you can physically, we want to invite you to come. Join us for an in-person service. If you're looking for your next step, that would be your very next step is to come join us in person. We don't want you to miss the blessing that is coming and being a part of a church and getting to know people and, and uh, enjoying everything that God is doing in and through this church. And so if, if you are part of our church and something crazy has kept you away today, then we miss you. And uh, we can't wait to see you again next Sunday. Thanks for keeping up to date with what we are going through together. We are going through a series called Peaks and valleys and that's uh something we we all experience it's why we're studying this because we all go through peaks and valleys it's something we all face now uh, sometimes those valleys seem pretty long and those peaks maybe seem pretty pretty short or maybe we think we we've been missing some of those peaks maybe we think we stay in the valleys an awful lot and we've gone through some pretty tough stuff um, here's what's, what's just so heavy on our hearts and why we're discussing this is that we must learn how to navigate peaks and valleys. Um, like there, there's, it's just, it's, it's coming our way. There's, there's no amount of finances. You can't buy your way out of a valley. You can't buy your way to a peak that's meaningful. You, no amount of connections or networking or family history or family name or job security or physical appearance or possessions make you immune from peaks and valleys. We all go through them. And, and what's just heavy on my heart for us is if we don't know or don't learn, discover together how to navigate those peaks and valleys, it can do some serious damage both to our life and the life of people we know and love and, and those we care about most. And so this is so beneficial. It's practical for you. This is a series for you. Now, now in, in this series, we, just, just a quick, quick reminder, we're going to avoid the extremes when it comes to peaks and valleys and, and, and how we think about them. One extreme would be, hey, everybody has them, so get over it. Well, that's an extreme. We're going we're gonna to avoid that one. All right? the, the other extreme would be just to kind of sit in and think about how bad we have it. We're going through a valley and it's so difficult. And we just kind of, uh, I think psychologists would, would call that ruminating. And we just kind of sit in it and stir it up. And we just kind of, all we ever think about is how bad we have it and how hard our lives are. And well, that's not helpful either. And there's got to be some helpful, healthy spiritual answers to the ups and downs of life. If, if, if that was true, wouldn't you want to know that? I mean, I would, and, and that, that's why we're talking about it. So we can serve you well, because we want you to know that, that although life brings peaks and valleys our way, that God is faithful through it all. And what if I told you that there's a God that is faithful through all the ups and downs of life? Now, the last couple of weeks, we, we took a time out from our series, and we had a couple of weeks of what we call missions emphasis we want to have a global impact from our church. And here's why we do that is because people all over the world have peaks and valleys. 
Like the, 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 the experience of having peaks and valleys and ups and downs has no border to it. Everybody has those, and, and, but not every place around the world has somebody to tell them or a church to go to to tell them about Jesus and, and how the promises of God can keep them steady through it all. And when we find out about people who are willing to go to places like Wales and places like Portugal to tell people about a God who loves them, and about Jesus who came, lived a life they couldn't live and died on a cross and paid for their sins so they can have hope and freedom and life and purpose. Um, we want you to know about those people and we want you to know about those opportunities. And so that's, that's, why, that's why we do that. We take a few specific intentional times throughout our calendar year to emphasize missions to our church. And so that's what the last couple of weeks were. Um, because, hey, we all go through, again, the peaks and valleys of life. I was reminded of this uh, illustration whenever I was thinking through this series. This is a handful of months ago, and I've been using this as an example for our church the entire series, but I read a story about a man named Michael Plant. He was an expert um, uh, yachtsman. He was, I mean, the, the, the folks in, in that world knew his name well, and they would have said he's better than anybody they know. Well, he sets out on this transatlantic solo mission in a boat what maybe would have been similar to something like this and he's an expert and his boat was state-of-the-art brand new stuff brand new equipment and and gear and, and rigging and everything that was needed for this thing to be a successful mission but about two weeks in they lost radio contact and it wasn't very long before the worst news that they could hear became reality they found his boat upside down with no sign of michael plant and what they discovered when they found that boat was that the weight right here that had been attached to the bottom of that boat was, was, was 8,000 pounds. No matter what waves came against this boat, it was that weight was going to keep this boat upright. It may lean a little bit. It might, it might go pretty far, but this weight's always going to pull it back to what is safe and steady and secure. Keep it stable. Well, that weight somehow, some way, nobody knows how or when or how or why, that weight was missing from the bottom of the keel. And when that weight was missing, everything about this boat's stability was compromised. And here's what we've learned. We've learned that just like when this is missing from this boat, the weight of everything about this boat's compromised, what we've learned is this. When we go through the peaks and valleys of life, it's the promises of God that are like the weight that keep us steady and secure, and spiritually healthy. They keep us focused and, and, and purposeful and, and, and have our eyes on what exactly we need to remember when we go through the ups and downs of life. I mean, the Bible talks about those promises this way in 2 Peter chapter 1. By which he has granted to us precious and very great promises. There is an intrinsic value to these promises. They are uh, precious in the sight of God. They are very great promises. They're not haphazardly made. They're not simplistically given. They, they are great promises. They carry weight to them. It's the, it's, it, it's, uh, the, the credibility of the promise maker that makes these promises so amazing. It's God giving promises to his people that will keep us steady when life gets stormy. Through those promises, it says, you may become partakers of the divine nature. That God works in our life. It says, through them. The them refers to the promises. And it's through those promises that something happens in us. That God works something in us along the way as we rest in, trust in, believe in his promises. It's the promise of God that will keep you steady through the peaks and valleys. It just is. We've looked at two of them already. One promise is this, that God is always with me. You need to know that God makes a promise in the Bible. He is always with you. He never loses you. He never loses track. He never gets distracted. He's with you. And some of it, maybe we just need a reminder today. God is with me. I need you to know, hear me say, God is with you. Even in the valley, God is with you. God is always in control. I mean, this is good news, right? That God is with me and, he, and he's in control. And that starts to settle me a little bit because the level of trust in a promise 
is directly tied to the object of that trust. We all know people in our lives, and hopefully we aren't one of them, but we know people who make a promise, and you hear them make a promise, and you're like, mm, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see. Well, God is just not like that. He proves himself over and over and over again, and that's what we see through Scripture. God is with me is comforting because it causes me to think, okay, he's with me, that, 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 that's good. And then God is in control is assuring, but, but sometimes it looks like uh, the wheels are coming off, and sometimes it looks like, well, okay, so I get it. If God is with me and he's in control, there's something else I need to know. And the promise we're going to look at today gives us a sneak peek into the heart of God. He's with me, and he's, he's in control, and the promise we'll look at today is that he's good. Because if God is with me and he's in control, but he's not good, that changes everything, doesn't it? And God makes a promise, and we see this all throughout Scripture, the testimony of men and women who went through the deepest of valleys and come out singing the praises of the goodness of the God who walked them through every single one. The goodness of God is a common theme throughout all Scripture. As a matter of fact, Psalm 27, verse 13 says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The goodness of God is something we find throughout the Bible. It's, it teaches us something about the character and nature of God, that He is good. He is good. Now, now a different translation says it this way, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God, goodness of the Lord, excuse me, in the land of the living. I would have despaired. If I, if I didn't have the goodness of God to be the, a weight that helps me stay steady and secure and spiritually healthy, I would have been full of despair. And maybe you're, you're, you're coming along with us on this journey, and honestly, you feel despair. You, you feel a bit overwhelmed at some things. And you need to know there's plenty of despair in the Bible. I mean, story after story of People who navigated peaks and valleys, ups and downs, from things like, well, I didn't see this coming. You ever get a surprise and it's not the good kind? You ever hear some news that's really, really tough to process? See, despair can come through news that's surprising. It can come through something that seems overwhelming. Something that just seems severe and it's just too much and I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what to think or feel or... I don't even know how to pray, or maybe I can't fix this. And despair comes in a wave of something we don't think is fixable. We just feel kind of settled into this rhythm of, I guess this is just how this is. And, and the Bible just gives us a, such a, um, and a, a pure and honest view of, of the people who are in it. Matter of fact, David's one of those examples in the Bible. And in Psalm 13, which is a psalm of David, we hear David express despair. But, 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 but at the end of the psalm, we see him trust in something greater than the despair that he's feeling. I want you to look at Psalm 13 with me. I mean, look at these words. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? You ever been through a moment or a season or a circumstance where if you were honest, you felt a little bit like David does in verse 1? God, did you forget about me? How long is this going to last? It's like you're hiding your face from me. Do, do you, are you not good? I thought you were good. If you are, then why am I going through this? This is a valley and it seems like it's lasting forever. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? It looks like, it looks like the bad guys are winning here. I think this through in my heart and my soul. My heart is full of sorrow. Consider me and answer me, verse 3, O Lord my God. Lift up my eyes lest I sleep the sleep of death. I need your help. Sometimes we could think, oh, if somebody was in the Bible, I mean, I'm looking at Psalm 13 here, and I think, man, surely nothing ever bad happens to somebody in the Bible, right? Like they probably never have a bad day spiritually. They probably never have a, a, a valley. They probably never have, you know, uh, misspeak or they never go through a tough circumstance or never feel depressed or full of anxiety or, or get bad news. And this is David just honestly pouring his heart out before a God that he, he knows is with him and he, he knows is in control. But, 
but, but, but what is going on here? And maybe you and I can feel that along the way. Verse 4 says this. It says, lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. This thing, is, this thing has got me. Whatever this is feels like too much and I don't know if I can handle this. I'm, I'm shaken in this. And then verse 5, we see David has trust in something and his trust is greater than his despair. You see, if I know God's with me, and I know he's in control, but I don't know that he's good, then it would still lead to despair. But because I can see from God's word and his history and his goodness in my life that God is good, then I don't have to despair. I would have despaired, but but I trust in something. Look at verse 5. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I trust you God, here's what I'm feeling, but here's what I know is true. That's the tension that matters so much. And we have to let what we know is true win over how we feel in a particular moment. It's the weight that keeps us steady and secure. I will sing to the Lord, verse 6, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Here's what I will do, David says. I will trust I will trust that God is good. He loves me. And, and God is love, the Bible says. It, you can't, he can't do anything. It's out of his nature to do anything that is not good for us. He, that's part of his love for us in our lives. I will sing to the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'll lift my voice even when I don't feel like it because you have dealt bountifully with me. There is a track record of your faithfulness in my life. Now, Again, a couple of simple things. We have to make sure we get settled in our heart and our life. The David, he's in a valley, and you and I, we go through valleys too. Um, just because you're going through a valley doesn't mean God um, uh, uh, has forgotten about you. He's not with you anymore. He's still not in control. It doesn't mean he's not in control. It doesn't mean he's not good. David's in a valley. The Bible calls David a man after God's own heart, and he has some pretty low lows if you ever read his story. Here's what matters most, though. Here's here's one of those things we have to learn. In the valley, David turns to God. And you and I, it's it's the best place to turn when we go through a valley, too. You see, here's some of the danger. The truth is this. You and I will, will turn to something, to someplace, or to someone when things get tough. And if we're not careful, we will look to things that are harmful. We will try to numb our pain, make ourselves forget about it for a minute. And we're not ever really dealing with the issue or turning to the thing that's most helpful. We can turn to things that do damage, that hurt us and the people we know and love most. I'm begging you, please don't do that. Turn to God. Turn to the one place that can give you exactly what you need, even in a valley. It's the promises of God that are the weight that keep us upright, that keep us steady through it all. Turn to God. Make sure you, this is what David did. Even when he didn't feel like it, even when it was most difficult, he held tightly to a promise of God that God loves and that love is steadfast and he is good. He's good. David trusted God and you and I, you can trust God's love and his goodness too. I mean, the Bible's full of the reminder of these kind of things. It's like a, it's like a safety net under all of life's circumstances. I, I heard one commentary verbalize it that way. I thought it was amazing. Sooner or later, you always see the goodness of God. When I go through a valley, there's this safety net of God's goodness under my life. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Right, write these down. Check it out. Psalm 145 verse 9, the Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. I mean, it's said this way in Jeremiah 29 11. This is 
written to the context is written to exiles, for people who were removed from their homeland and under captivity. And it's God saying to them, I know you're in a valley right now, but I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, for good, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God is good. Romans 8, 28 says it this way. You, you should memorize this verse. You should commit this verse to memory. Make a, make a note on the side and come back to memorize this. When we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. You see, we see a promise of God here. That God is good. That God makes a promise to his people. Again, when we're... When we're um, following him and doing our best to follow his word and his way and committing our lives to him. Okay, that there's, there's, there's qualification in Romans 8, 28, right? Works, the, the, uh, that we know that, all, that for those who love God, all things work for good. It would be like saying, hey, you want nothing to do with God. Why, why, why um, you won't see God at work in your life. You want nothing to do with him. But if I love God, if I'm searching for God to show me what's happening in my life, um, to searching his word and searching his way and want to honor him, um, things will work together for good. It's ultimately going to happen because God makes a promise. He is good. And although I can't see it now, he's working something good that will ultimately be seen. If I don't have something to guide me through the valley, I'll get lost. How about you? I'll get desperate and I'll start looking for answers in places that, will, that were never designed to ultimately deliver what I really need. Turn to God just like David did. It's the promise of God that he is always good. I know he's always with me. I know he's always in control. And the thing that, that makes it to where I don't have to despair ever is that I know God is always good too. Now, I know at times in our lives it doesn't seem that way. Trusting that the safety net of God's promises is always there. It's probably actually the harder thing to do. It's easier, honestly, to try to forget your valley for a moment. To drown it in a bottle or forget about it, numb that pain for a minute or, or just find something to make me forget about it. And again, those things can be dangerous and harmful. So don't do that. Turn to God, come back to him and trust that God is good. That somehow, some way, he's working something good. Well, how do I know that? Well, I know this. I know that I've seen God work through incredibly difficult circumstances in my life. I can tell you for stories of our own family. I can, I can tell you stories of parents, both in my family and in our church, who get news that their child is sick and has cancer. And when they trust in the goodness of God, it's the, it's the anchor for their soul that helps them navigate a valley. And somehow, some way, if you were to talk to them today, they would say, God is good. Wait, wait, wait. Even though my kid went through that? And they would say, yeah, 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 God is good. I, I could introduce you to someone who, who has, uh, who's gone through a divorce. And they would say, it's one of the deepest valleys I've ever gone through in my life. But I'm here to tell you that God is good. I could introduce you to someone who's lost a parent. And they would say, God is good. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the toughest things I've ever experienced in my life, but I'm here to tell you that God is good. I could introduce you to people who lost their jobs, who realized or maybe admitted the reality of an addiction in their life, checked themselves into rehab and got right and got better and walked through a valley and came out on the other side saying God is good. But, but wait, but even though you went through a valley, yeah, 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 even though I went through a valley, God was with me, I trusted he was in control, and I'm telling you, God is good. To someone getting help from addictions to depression to anxiety, those are all stories of people I know, either in my family or in our church. And every one of them would stand up and say, yeah, 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 God is good. You see, this isn't just this isn't just, you don't check your brains at the door. It's not blind. It's not, it's not weakness to put your faith and trust in the promises of God. It's strength. 
And here's what, I, here's what we need to learn together is that whether I'm at a peak or a valley, I need to remember that God is with me. He's always in control and he's always good. It's who he is. And when I look anywhere else, I get lost. And all the while, there's a God who, who, who has given us everything we could possibly need to know who he is in the words of, of his book and the life of Jesus to know that we serve a God who is good. And I just want to, remind you today that no matter what you're going through please remember that God's with you he's in control he's in control and he's always good let's pray father thank you for uh, our chance to be together today thank you for your word and what it teaches us remind us often about your goodness because we can forget it all too easy we get overwhelmed with circumstances of life so please help us to know how good God is Remind us, settle that in our hearts and our lives and uh, help us to, to, to hang on to the promises of God as what will help us navigate every peak and valley as we go through life. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us first and most. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Hey, everybody. Pastor John here. I just wanted to uh, get with you just for a brief moment here in our online service and just um, pause and, and say thank you for your continued faithfulness to give. We, just to remind you, we, we do consider this part of our worship. It's not a, a tack-on, add-on thing. We're grateful for your faithfulness. We, as pastors, we just, like, I want you to hear me say, I'm thankful for your giving. I do not take it for granted. We as a church, we do not take it for granted. Your faithfulness and your sacrifice to give generously, it's a very big deal. So thank you for giving. You'll see on the screen just the, the easy and safe and convenient ways to give here at Hope. And, and your, your faithfulness to give consistently helps us budget and plan well and and make a big impact and one of those ways we want to celebrate with you is is we're able this year again to do um uh, to partner with i should say um uh, great house elementary for a program called donuts with dads now the emphasis is how do we get more dads to show up in the lives of kids because let's be honest in our culture that's missing overall uh, but we love it when moms show up we love it when grandparents show up we, we love all those all of those things and and you'll see some pictures, if you haven't already, of just, just, just we just had our last one of the year. And it, it might have been one of our biggest ones of the year. It's amazing to see a room full of people that as a church we get to invest in. They know that we are there representing our church because we care about them and their families. And we get to do that because you give. We show up with 30 dozen donuts and five gallons of coffee and uh five gallons of orange juice and a couple gallons of milk and, and all kinds of stuff for these kids. And they have an amazing time and get loved on because of, because of your faithfulness to give. So thank you so much for giving. It matters big time and we're super thankful for it. Happy Mother's Day. We are honored you are here today and want to ensure you're up to date on several events, ways to serve and ways to get involved here at Hope. Remember to mark your calendars. Are you looking for an opportunity to serve? On Thursday, May 16th, we are partnering with Mission Agape to pack weekend meal bags for kids in our community. You can sign up today to serve. On Sunday, May 19th, join us in the gym following both services for a fundraiser luncheon to support the missions trip to Guatemala. Kids Camp is right around the corner. On May 28th through 30th, we will have a Hope Kids Summer Day Camp right here at the church. This camp is for all children entering 3rd through 6th grade. For more info and to register, go to hccmidland.com slash kidscamp. Once again, happy Mother's Day and thank you for joining us here at Hope. We hope you have a great week and can't wait to see you again next Sunday.